Hey everybody, it's Aaron Blaze, and uh, it's been a while since I've talked to you guys. I'm in my new digs now, and uh, I've got some uh, some new brushes, some new Photoshop brushes that I've created that I want to share with you guys. I think they came out really cool. Um, as some of you know, you know, I when I do my um, my digital work, I I don't like it to look digital. I want it to look traditional because a lot of times what I'm doing is I'm creating imagery as a comp, as a as like a practice image for a big traditional piece that I might do. So I like I like my digital artwork to look traditional. And so <clears throat> for a while I've been wanting to come up with brushes that could work on a on a canvas surface or a watercolor paper surface or something like that um, that would mimic dry brushing and 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 dry media and, and and paint brushing and that sort of thing over these surfaces and so finally i've come up with a way of doing that and i want to share them with you guys these uh these brushes are going to be available on my website creatureartteacher.com and uh let's do let's go into this first one right here so um what i've got is i've got two sets of brushes one is for canvas texture the other one is for a watercolor uh paper surface and um, uh, let's look at this first one. This this is the canvas texture one. You can see, I'm going to blow it up a little bit bigger. And you can see I've got this nice canvas background. And so one of the things I want to um, let you know is that when you if you get these brushes, you also get the background. Because what's very cool, um, one of the big breakthroughs that I had was I was able to come up with a way that the brush, when you use these brushes, they will they will react to the exact surface of this background. So if you can see, let me blow up some of these. So you can see here, you know, um, like there's a, there's this piece of texture right here that kind of stands out, you know, it's not all uniform. And as you brush over it, it'll react to that certain piece of texture. That's what's kind of fun about these. Um, and, I have a whole slew of them. I'll, I'll open them up up here. There's 20 brushes in the set. There they are right there. And all of them will react to uh, to this background texture. Now, there's a certain way that I set this up, and I want to show it to you guys. So I've opened this up as a document, and you'll get this when you download these files. But you open up this background, and you can see over here on the right side of my layers, I've got the background. Now, one of the things I want to do is I want to drag it down and bring it to this little piece of paper icon and copy it. And you can see I've created a background copy, okay? Now that is gonna sit on top and I'll show you what we're gonna do with that in just a minute. Now, and uh, uh, click on the background and I'm gonna come down and create a new layer by clicking this little piece of paper down here. Now I've got a layer in the middle, okay? Now if you wanna start with white, that's fine. But another thing you can do is I can go and create a color. Let's just grab this color right here grab my bucket and I'm going to go ahead and fill it. Now you can't see it because I've got this layer on top. Now you say, well, okay, that's great. I got uh, the, the texture's gone though. Well, if I come up here, so I've got, go to the layer that has the color, go to, and, and go to the blend modes. So these are the blend modes right here. Go to the blend modes and come down to multiply. If I click on multiply, then what it does is it multiplies with the background, with the, with the layer underneath. And so now I've got a toned background, okay? So now I'm gonna leave that and I'm gonna create a layer on top. And once again, I'm gonna click on this, the, this upper layer and all of a sudden I've lost the color again. Well, once again, we'll click on this, set it to multiply. And now you can see the texture is really strong. That's because that texture is gonna stay on top of everything. I'm gonna knock that opacity of that upper layer, I'm gonna knock it down to about 50%, okay? So now, where it says layer two, this is gonna be my drawing layer, or painting layer, or whatever you wanna call it, okay? So that's gonna be our drawing and painting layer. So let's come up to these brushes. Let's go ahead and demo these. So I'm gonna get this to fit the screen. Oh, and by the way, if you if you see me, you know, my shortcut, if I hit uh, command zero, that automatically gets it to fit the screen. Okay, so I'll come up to the brushes. I'm going to open them up and let's just, I'm just going to take you through them. So let's just grab this first brush. I'm going to get a nice dark color. Actually, let's make it blue, something that's going to complement that orange. 
if I come up here and start drawing you can see that it's actually reacting to the texture underneath and if I blow this up see that it looks like it's working right over that texture and if I work in one area hard enough it'll fill it in just like regular paint so this kind of looks like it's kind of a wet washy kind of color over the top of it like so and some of you might be saying well that's just because I've created this texture on this overlay well, I want to show you what these brushes look like without the texture there's still texture there it's just that it works better when you have a background texture so I'm going to turn this off I'm going to take this background color I'm going to set that back to normal so we get rid of all the texture but look you see these brushes have the texture built right into them so if you don't want that textured background you don't have to have it you can still have these textured brushes like so okay but if I turn this back to multiply and turn that back on now all of a sudden it really feels like I'm painting over canvas and once again remember I was talking about see that let me show the show you again see that piece of texture right there that little piece I brush over it and look it's reacted to that specific piece it matches all of the texture all of the texture in this background it matches and actually I just drew on that background so I'm going to get rid of some of these brush strokes like so I always do that I'm not paying attention to what layer that I'm on and I draw on the wrong drawing on the wrong layer so so there we go so there's that I'm going to drag that out drop out put a new layer in there and let's just grab another one see this one, this one has a slightly different feel to it it's a little wetter on the edges you know or it could be if you're thinking about pastel maybe it's a little softer dustier piece of chart chalk you see that if I increase the size you get a different feel altogether blow it up even more see that and it really feels like we're working over the top let me blow that up a little bit so you can see it there see that let's go ahead and grab another one now these are interesting now these are very uh, chalky kind of dry brushy if I drag this over the top you can see it's like uh, it's like it's a thin wash and the pigment has settled into the creases and or into the uh, little recesses in the canvas you see like so and these three brushes each have different amounts that will actually hit the canvas now this one this next one is just a very light kind of dusting that hits the uh, you can see it just barely hits it and what's nice about that is, is you can go in let's say we wanted uh, let's grab this bright yellow I drag it over the top you can see you can just add these little hints of color over uh, some of these textured surfaces like so let's grab another one here we go grab a darker color let's keep it in the blue it's pretty straightforward so this is you know once again if I press hard enough it fills in the fills in the uh, the, the texture but I can I can shrink it down and it gives me a nice drawing line but it still retains that texture as if I'm drawing over the top of the the texture there or if I go big with it it gives me a nice look over the top of the texture if I want to fill in an area okay moving right along I think it was in here there we go let's get this to fit again there we go and you can see we get a nice texture there here's one that you know we lose the edges a little bit more you know some of them I want you know I, I, 
I, I don't like hard digital looking edges. I want things to be lost and random and, and that's kind of what I've been trying to do here by creating these brushes. I, you know, you can get lost edges. Um, you never know, you know, you can really use that texture to your advantage to, to create these nice soft areas, these soft edges like so. You know, if we, and then going over the top of it, you can get a nice, see how that feel? It looks, just, it has this great feel to it when you layer the color. If I layer color over the top of that, it feels really good. And once again, if I work it enough, I can fill in those crevices just like real paint. And so you can see in this area, it's like I've filled it in with paint, like so. And this, here's one that's, you know, a little more splashy along the edges, a little wetter. And once again, if I work that area, then I can fill it in. But I can also lose these edges out here, like so. And once again, see how that, it, hold, it retains that texture. If I go with a lighter color over the top, it holds that texture. It feels very, very organic. See there? Let me blow that up a little bit so you can see it a little better. It feels, I love the, the way these, these, these feel. And I want to show you something real quick. So, you know, with these in mind, I'm going to take you through the other brushes. You know, I was, I was able to, I wanted to sit down and actually do a painting the other night using just these brushes and see what I could create. And so, since uh, a lot of you know that I like to do animal paintings, um, this is one that I created. Whoops, there we go. Using just those brushes, and you can see how all that texture comes together, and it really feels like a, um, a painting that I did on canvas. And what's great about this is I could sell it as, you know, as prints like this, or I use this as a comp, and I set it up and I go off and I can go do a, using this as inspiration, I can do a real painting on real canvas and, um, and I can see, you know, where I'm going with it and what I want to do. So it's kind of cool. There we go. So let's come back to here. I'm going to drag this out again. There we go. And let's grab some more brushes. Let's see what we got on this next one. I want to go with the blue again. I just like using blue over orange. See, here's another one that I just wanted something that would very slightly, just lightly hit some of those crevices, just to add a little color. So let's say, Let's say, okay, let's go back. I'm going to grab this brush and let's fill in an area like so. Okay, so I'm going to fill it in, fill it in. I've got it all nice and filled in. I want to come back and I'm going to grab that brush and let's hit a complementary color. I'm orange. And I just lightly brush over the top. See what it does? It creates this nice little dusting of color that can optically mix with what you've got going on in there. So if I shrink this down a little bit, you see you get a nice little little vibration of color in there. And it's, a, and it, and it's very random. That's what I love about this. See how random that works? Because it's really, it's just going according to the texture that's in the background. Here's another one. Whoops, let me go with a darker line here. There's another one. Once again, nice drawing. This would be a nice drawing uh, brush. So nice and detailed. You can see if I go light with it, it's a nice light line. If I go hard with it, you know, it can go nice and dark. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm working on a, a Cintiq 27 QHD made by Wacom. Um, some of you might be using a tablet. Others, I, I get a lot of people ask me because they don't know what the tools are. And so they ask me if I'm actually using a mouse. No, I'm not using a mouse. I never use a mouse to draw. There's my mouse. I'm using this. This is my, my stylus. It's basically a pencil. 
um, and I draw right on the screen and if I make a mistake I can turn it over like so and I can erase just like a pencil it's very very cool all right so for those of you that don't know what the materials are this is a Wacom Cintiq 27 QHD this is a big screen that I'm actually drawing and painting on now for uh, other folks might be using a tablet which you'll get the same effect as what I'm drawing now but you're using a tablet separate from the screen okay so anyway so there's that line and actually if you blow this up you still get a nice kind of effect with it you know it's a nice big brush it's heavier there's he heavier pigment coming out like so okay there's another one this one's kind of cool it's a little wet and if I press hard it just goes really dark but if I go light I can really just get like little bits of texture but watch as I increase the hardness the pressure on my pen as I increase the pressure you get a nice transition so as I, as I lighten up the pressure it really goes into this really light texture this brush is really handy because it doesn't you know it has that variety the harder you press and so if I go big with it, I'm just going light, you know, just like that other brush. If I go, let's uh, let's go with this bright orange like we did earlier. If I go light over the top, you can see, you know, I'm just lightly hitting this area. But if I press hard, look at that, nice and dark, nice and opaque, actually, you know. So that's a good brush. They're all good brushes, but I just you know, I really like that one a lot. Here's one that's a little more splattery. And a little lighter it's as if it, it's more watery if I was using like a, a you know a wet brush that's kind of splattery if I go big with it it really shows off some of that texture and you can see how it splatters around and that's good for backgrounds and creating just like a, like a, a nice loose kind of textury background if I go bright with this you can see how it works over the top like so. Here's one that's, you know, creating a nice line. But it's kind of loose. Once again, I'm very much a fan of, of going really kind of organic with these brushes. See there? I'm really, it's really working that texture. I change the size this is a fun one look at that splat 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 you know it really is good for laying in texture for a background so let me let me dump this out let's say we want to create uh, let's go into the orange but we want to create some texture in here I can come in and just start to splatter around paint just lightly And then go a little different with it. It just creates some nice textury kind of dusty backgrounds. Like so. And it was with this brush, if you look at right here, right there. So if you look at this background, now I had a different splatter brush that did some of these little splatters, but all of this texture you see in this background was used, I, I used that, this brush over here, I used this brush right here to do this in this background. So it really comes in handy to create these kind of organic, earthy kind of backgrounds. I really like it. Whoops, let's get back to our dark. There we go. There's another one kind of splattery a little heavier in the pigment so that you can get the nice deep you know covering coverage of the canvas like so but if you want something really whoops there we go if you want something that it's a little more detailed just play with that size so it, you know it's got multiple uses now these are more like a paintbrush so I'm trying to get something that's a little wetter. Maybe the pigment has seeped into the edges of the of the um, texture here. And 
the harder I press, the darker it gets. The later I go, get a nice thin line like so. Once again, more like a paintbrush. And that's what some of these next that's what these next brushes are doing. Here's another one like so. If I go, let's go lighter. See that right over the top? Now look at that. See that texture coming through as I press this down? See that? It's like I'm painting real blue paint right into this thing. You can almost see that it's wet. See that? Let's go with the compliment. Just like so. Okay? And these, I'm trying to use, uh, I tried to create more of a, um, like a flat bristle brush running over the surface. This one is light on pigment. So what I was trying to do was create kind of a flat, like a flat paintbrush, flat bristle brush that was, had, you know, very little pigment in it. And you could just drag over the surface like so and get some nice effects. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to set this to normal and just let that, this top one kind of carry the texture. So what I've done is I've lightened up that texture so you can really see the paintbrush even more. Still got the texture, but just lightly. And that's the beauty of this. If you don't want a lot of texture for your background, you can just, you can just play with it, just change it. Or you can make it a lot of texture, like so. And then finally, it's the same brush, but it's heavier. Whoops, I've got heavier pigment in there. But you can see if I just quickly brush, you can see as it, you know, as my stylus lifts off, it's just like a regular paintbrush. It just kind of skims the surface, skims the surface. See if I go very light, I'm just very lightly painting but as I go harder and harder, there, you can create these great effects. All right, so that's those are the, the canvas texture brushes. Um, and once again, I want to review if we, let me dump these real quick just to start over. So when you open up this background, this is what you get. Here is the canvas background. And once again, the first thing is I, I do is I copy it. I set this top one to multiply like so. Now you're going to see that it really increases the texture. Don't worry about that. Go ahead and click on your background layer and create a new layer. And if you want color, then go ahead and just add that color. Let's go ahead and fill it. And you can see there we've got this, this background. Now, if you don't want as much texture, you can just come up to the opacity on the top layer and play with that opacity. If I bring the opacity down to almost zero, you can see, but as I gradually bring it up, I'm gradually getting more and more texture, like so. And if you want a lot of texture, come down to your color layer and hit multiply on that, and you can see, boom, we got a lot of texture, okay? So there's all kinds of variables that you can play with in there. Set that to normal, okay? And then once again, above your colored layer, you can create a new layer, and this will be your drawing or painting layer, okay? So there's that. Let's, um, I'll give you a little lesson in, uh, let's just get rid of that for right now. And we'll get rid of this. I'm gonna give you a lesson on loading new brushes, because I want to, uh, I want to show you the watercolor brushes. So here's the watercolor background. Let me blow this up. So you can see these are basically the same brushes with a few differences, basically the same brushes that I just showed you. But now that rather than reacting to a canvas texture, I've created them to react to a watercolor texture. Now, those of you that paint watercolor, you can see that this is cold press watercolor paper. Cold press is much more textured, has a lot more grooves to it. Hot press is smooth. Cold press is much more textured. And you can get varying degrees of texture. This one I wanted to be fairly textured so that we could really play with the effect. Now, um, I'll give you a quick lesson in, in or, your, your brush organization and how to load new brushes. Uh, some people ask me about how to, you know, how do I 
track my libraries and all that kind of thing and, and load new brushes and, and all that. If For those of you that know me, I have a big mess of brushes that I, they're just a big pile. But every once in a while, I keep certain ones in certain sets. So what you want to do, right now we've got our canvas brushes in here and they won't really work over this over this paper. So what I'd like, or they, I mean, let's see actually what, what would happen. You know, if I brushed over the top, you can see it doesn't, that texture doesn't match our paper texture. So we don't want that. So what I want to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to come to my preset manager. We're going to click on that. Now you can see these are the brushes that I've got loaded. Well, let's, I'm going to click on the first one, hold my shift key, click on the last one. So all of them are highlighted and I'm going to hit delete. So now I've gotten rid of those brushes. I've already got them saved in another place. So I'm, they're not gone forever. And now I'm going to hit load like that. And it's going to take me to, uh, I've got these other brushes set up right here. And so here you can see I've got cold press watercolor texture brushes. I'm going to click on those and I'm going to hit open. And then it's going to take a second and then boom. Now we've got them here. We hit done. And now I've got my new brushes set up in here. And that's as, it's as simple as that. You can add brushes, get rid of brushes, just as long as you, um, you've got them saved somewhere. And if you want to save a set of brushes, you've got a preset manager, you can highlight whatever brushes you want to save, and then you can hit save, set, you name them, and, they, and then you just put them away somewhere. It's very simple. But now, um, so we've got our brushes set up here. And remember, I, I, I was just using those uh, when I just used that, that brush over the top of the surface and it was a canvas texture, it didn't match. Now I've got the same brush, but I've got the watercolor texture on it. And if I brush over the top, look at that. Now it's matching the watercolor surface. See that? It's very, very cool. But let's go ahead and let's do the color. I want to I add a little colored background to it. We're going to fill that. There we go. We've got our... our, our uh, layer on top. It's got some texture to it. I'm going to go ahead and set that to multiply as well, our color layer. And let's knock that down just a bit. And just like we did before, I'm going to create my drawing layer. Get in the habit of keeping your layers labeled. All right, now let's just go ahead and start at the beginning. So let's get a nice blue once again, it's a nice drawing line, but you can see it reacts to that, that specific texture we've got. If I make this bigger. Now, the other thing I want to mention, I've got another set of brushes that are called wet media brushes. And uh, they go really well with this watercolor texture and in conjunction with these watercolor brushes that I'm demonstrating right now. Um, they're meant to look like wet ink or watercolor on a, on a wet surface. And so those mixed with these, they're, they go really well together. And let's grab another one. And once again, some softer edges working over the surface of this watercolor texture, like so. And here we go again. I'm going to go a little... This is kind of neat. This is more like a chalky, surfacey kind of thing, like so. This is going to go a little lighter. This is like a drier chalk, almost like a pastel over the surface of it. And then once again, just very lightly, just very lightly hits the... And if I go, let's go with the light blue and drag it over the top. See there? You blow that up. See that? Just hitting, hitting that top relief, like so. There we go. Here's got this has got a little bit of a, a wet brush feel to it. It's got a nice, nice feel. There you go really hits that texture nicely. And here we go once again. This is a nice, you know, if you want to get some detail work, um, you can go smaller with it and it creates a nice line. 
still reacting to the texture underneath, even in a small line, which is great. Or I can go really big with it. And it creates a nice, a nice brush stroke like so. This is cool. This is kind of splattery on the edges. If I go big with it, it really shows off that texture. This is one that's kind of similar. But the splatter edges are different. They're a little lighter on the edges. See there? Let's go lighter with it. And what's nice, I see it's really fun to layer these brushes, to layer the color. To see what you get. There, see that? You get these great effects that sit right over the surface really well. This is a nice splatter, like so. Once again, another nice line brush. So if I want to go smaller with it, like I did with the other one, it works really well. We go big with it. It creates a nice line, but really nice lost edges. This is, this one I, I really dig because of that, you know, that how the edges of the brush stroke kind of get lost into the texture. Like so it's like it's bleeding into the texture. I believe that was, oh, here's, oh, this is, this is a good one. This is the one, remember, if I go really light with it, like on the canvas one, it works really well. But then if you press a little more, you get into some nice opaque color. Let's go a little lighter with it. See there? That feels pretty cool. See there? Very organic feeling. That's the goal. I want everything to feel traditional, organic. These splatter brushes are, are fun, but they retain that texture. You know, if you want to see this, you can see it still has that watercolor texture underneath, but it's more splattery. Same here. If I blow this up, see the watercolor texture in there? This one has less pigment in it. And if I sling it really hard, look how it splats out, <laughs> out the edges. It reacts to the movement, which is kind of fun. Once again, I drew right where I shouldn't have drawn. So I'm going to put, create that. And let's do a new fill background. There we go. And we'll set that to multiply. And let's turn that back on. All right. And once again, here's that big splatter. Oh, let me grab a different color. Here's that big splatter. Look at that. That's a lot of fun. Splat, splat. And once again, if I swerve it fast this way, it splatters. You know, it, it splatters in the direction that you you move your hand. It's kind of fun. And it really retains that, that texture underneath. That's what's cool about it. So if I want to go lighter, throw some different color on top. Look how organic that feels. It feels, it doesn't feel digital at all. It feels like I was splattering paint on some watercolor paper. And uh, you know, that's, that's the goal here to make these feel as traditional as possible. Like so. And some people ask me, well, why don't you just pick up a paintbrush and start painting traditionally? Well, I do, but you know, sometimes I, uh, I don't have the paper. <laughs> Or I don't want to ruin some paper by, you know, if I want to experiment, you know, and, and so this is a, a quick, easy way of having some fun and, uh, and not getting the walls all messy. <laughs> so there you go. See that? Lots of fun. And let's get some darker color here. And another one that is really kind of 
just really plays with that texture that surfacey texture there you go and here's those brush strokes this is more of like a wet kind of a wet almost like a wet magic marker kind of feel I can go big with the brush let's go really big with it see you see the brush strokes in there it's a lot of fun and it follows the direction that you go in there see that there's that so let's do the next one very brushy this one's got a lot of the brush strokes in it the hairs I wanted something that you could feel the hairs of the brush not too heavy just something subtle and that's what I created here so it feels like you know I'm just, I'm just using a, a kind of a large round brush but I could shrink it down and get a nice feel that way as well oops here we go get rid of that get rid of that and here we are back to our our flat brushes that are a little wetter and just dragging over the surface that maybe don't bleed out as much like so and here's the last one it's a little drier or are the, the crevices down in between don't catch as much pigment like so okay so those are uh, there we go those are the um, those are my brushes those are the, the my latest brushes let me bring this one over again and show you what you can achieve you know if you, you know this is with the canvas brushes you know if you get these have some fun with them really experiment with them really you know layer them and uh, and see what kind of effects you can get it, it works really well with plain color working color on top of color and um, and you really great get some great organic effects with them so uh, you know check out my website creatureartteacher.com that's where you'll find these brushes and um, and if you get them you know have some fun create some paintings I'd love to see what you guys create um, and uh, until next time I you know go out and paint have a great time, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, please hit the red subscribe button down below. Spread the word. And also, if there's something that you're not seeing that you'd like to see, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot.